Hey everybody, I'm Alex from SitePoint and welcome to JumpCasts. Now if you've seen some CSS3 animation but haven't had much chance to use it yet, today's a great chance to get up to speed with it. In part one we're going to run through the CSS3 animation syntax and in part two we're going to put it into action. So let's get started. One of the different things about CSS animation is that it's actually applied in two parts. We have to build the animation separately and then we apply it to whatever element we'd like to use it on. So let's build the animation by starting out with the at keyframes keyword and giving the animation a name. Any name you like I'm going to call our animation, our simple animation switcher because it's going to switch some colors and we open up a a classic set of CSS3 or CSS endorsed curly braces. Uh, now inside these braces we're going to set up our timeline and there are two official ways of doing it. There is the the from and uh, to keywords which will give you starting and ending points. Um, I can't really see any point in using these because there's no midway points and I don't think that they're particularly uh, any more simple than zero to a hundred percent conceptually I don't think there's any uh, that's any harder to understand than from and to so I would recommend just using uh, the, the percentages so inside those nested curly braces we're going to set the background originally to red and then at a hundred percent we're going to transition through to blue and that's our little animation, a very simple animation built but obviously it does nothing at the moment because it's not applied to any element on the page. So if we go up into our box rule just above and add animation, there's two minimum requirements for the, the animation shorthand when we apply it. We need the name which of course is switcher and we need a duration so let's start off with three seconds and that animated simply just the once. Most of the time you're going to want to determine exactly how many times you want the animation to uh, perform. So if I add four to the end, you can see our animation goes through four iterations. And uh, a lot of the time, probably one of the more common situations is you're going to want something to keep uh, animating continuously. So if we use the keyword infinite on the end, and you can see that begin to animate. I'm going to set the time back to one second just to speed things up a little. And there we have a really simple red and blue flashing animation. And that's all we've got time for in part one. Check back for part two where we'll cover a more complicated example and we'll also look at how it works in the browsers and how it doesn't. Thanks for watching.